discussed about the neuroma now this is important because even though it is not that common there are three and three entity you have to remember neuroma neurofibroma schwannoma neurofibroma is common schwannoma is less common neuroma is not that common but the meanings of these three to understand is very very important that's why i put neuroma what is neuroma it is a swelling arising in relation to the nerve fiber very simple it is it's all exactly defined as so there are two types true neuroma and false neuroma so what is true neuroma it's a rare entity it usually develops in relation to the sympathetic nervous system there are two types under true neuroma one is ganglioneuroma it's a common type it contains ganglion cells nerve fibers and it arises from the sympathetic chain and it presents as a mass in the neck in the thorax in the retroperitoneum or adrenal medulla it's usually benign but it is very large size so it is treated by complete excision of course you have to do ct scan you have to do evaluate you have to rule out other possible diagnosis then go ahead and do the complete surgical excision under general anesthesia it is a more or less curable condition so what is the next type again it's very rare myelinic neuroma contains only nerve fibers without ganglion cells here ganglion cells are present here no ganglion cells which is seen in spinal cord or pia mater so it's rare but you have to remember why this because we are going to discuss next is neurofibroma so you should be able to have the idea a difference between what take word meaning that's why i'm discussing about this neuroma even though it is not that common so false neuroma is i already told it occurs due to injury to nerve by trauma or during surgery during any surgery you may injure the nerve especially in the limbs during amputation and it arises from the connective tissue of the nerve sheath and it contains fibrous tissue of with the coiled nerve fibers now because of trauma it occurs now where exactly nerve is injured based on that it develops so based on that it is being classified as end neuroma and side or lateral neuroma so end neuromas are commonly seen in amputation stem and they are tender localized firm swelling and which is adherent to the scar underneath and they it causes stump neuralgia they will have severe pain excruciating pain on the stump they will say pain pain continuously do something and lateral neuroma is or the lateral aspect of the nerve not end it's a partial nerve injury actually and along the line of the peripheral nerve talkers again it's a tender swelling not, not laterally not over the end so diagram wise this is how exactly this is the end neuroma commonly seen in the amputation stump with the lateral neuroma there will be partial injury here total cut here partial injury so this is cause of the pain and swelling here this cause of here in the end so this is the meaning of false neuroma fibroma so neuroma neurofibroma schwannoma fibroma so neuro neural and fibrous com- combination is called a neurofibroma so you have to know what is fibroma before discussing about the neurofibroma that's why i put fibroma here so what is fibroma it's a benign tumor arising from the fibrous tissue so it is capsulated it's got a capsule it's well localized true fibroma maybe it may be soft it may be hard now why this difference is fibrous tissue if it is immature it is soft in hard type they are mature fibrous tissue may you remember mature fibrous tissue are are hard immature one are soft so that is how it is being classified it is common in palm and sole so true fibroma is rare it is usually associated with the other mesodermal tissues like nerve sheath then it is called neurofibroma fat fibrolipoma muscle fibromyoma and so on that's where this entity has come no neuroma is rare fibroma per se is rare no combination is common there is a neurofibroma has come so that's what next we are going to discuss so there's a typical picture of neurofibroma only fibroma see that in the palm it occurs it's not that common but it's a typical there's a exact it looks like uh, fibroma now an entity called aggressive fibromatosis it's again related to the fibrous tissue it occurs as un- encapsulated proliferation of fibrous tissue it is common in the abdominal wall and chest wall if you see few patients then it will it will always remember uh, picture and you will be able to diagnose those conditions it is considered presently as locally malignant usually it does not spread to the other systems like lungs and other area and nor even through lymphatics 
but recurrence is common if you don't remove it properly even after removal also sometimes it may recur that is called aggressive fibromatosis now desmoid tumor again it's a very common question asked in viva they will ask sometimes mcq they will ask sometimes short mode they will ask remember what is desmoid tumor you should remember it is a variant of aggressive fibromatosis very common is females often associated with the gardner syndrome now gardner syndrome is a syndrome complex wherein there is a desmoid tumor multiple cbh acids and gi polyps in detail you are going to discuss about that at a later period but remember desmoid tumor what it means you should know recurrent fibroid phages is a rare type of fibrosarcoma occurring in scar tissue after many years now we will come to the important topic what is called as neurofibroma now to discuss you should have a meaning about neuroma fibroma all those things then you will have the idea what is neurofibroma now it is a benign tumor arising from the nerve containing ectodermal neural and mesodermal connective tissue components it is arising from the connective tissue component mainly nerve sheath and it can be single or multiple solitary neurofibroma or multiple neurofibromatosis it may be familial also neurofibromas may be associated with the pheochromocytoma hypertension few other syndromes also remember sites cranial spinal peripheral types are nodular neurofibroma flexiform neurofibroma in nodular multiple nodules are there even if once i show the picture you will have the idea how exactly it looks look like flexiform is like it hangs like this is flexiform neurofibroma pachydermatosal generalized neurofibromatosis that is also called as von Recklinghausen disease of neurofibromatosis now why i am specifying this one because there is one more von Recklinghausen disease of hyperparathyroidism in parathyroid diseases so that von Recklinghausen disease of hyperparathyroidism is different from von Recklinghausen disease of generalized neurofibromatosis